Good morning, Daiwa fans, and welcome to a new day. It is the Daiwa Brim Australian Open. New day, new venue. We're at Hawkesbury River for day two of the event, and we're moments away from the start, and I think it's a good opportunity to chat to some of our guys about day one, how they went, and how they're feeling about day two. Let's, uh, let's move on through and chat to some of our guys. We'll roll on down here. Armit, come and join me, my friend. I'm very well. How are you? You ha you had an awesome day one. Yep, yep. Day one was good. Um, let's hope we can keep it up. Now, we chatted to you last night on the live about day two and you were praying for rain. It's overcast, but we didn't get any rain last night. How much is this going to affect your bite? Um, it's going to affect it. It's, it is going to affect it. I've just changed my whole game plan um, last minute, so uh, let's hope it sticks. Does that make you nervous when you change it at the last minute? It is very, I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous. So the first two hours, um, I don't know if I'm going to get any fish, but I'm, I'm going big. So let's hope, let's hope it works out. Now, of course, we're doing live today, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Are you going to be in an area where we can get you on the phone? Um, possibly. Possibly. Sometimes there's no reception um, where I am, but uh, it should be all right. All right. Uh, I can't see any lures tied on, so you're keeping your cards close to your chest, mate. There, mate. G good luck. He had a solid day one, praying for a solid day two for him. Another guy with us, Daniel Bonacorso, red hot on day one on the harbour. How are you feeling about day two on the Hawkesbury, mate? Yeah, I'm pretty relaxed. Um, I don't think I'll get a, as big a bag as what I did yesterday, but um, yeah, I can just go out there and just see how I go. Now, we just chatted to Ahmed and he said he's had a, a late minute change to his plans. He was praying for rain. You were doing the same thing. Yeah, um, look, I think with the overcast conditions, it'll still, it'll still be all right. Um, yeah, I've sort of just mixed up my game plan as well a little bit. Yeah. Can you give us a bit of an insight into what you might be throwing? Um, again, I'm going to be jump fishing. I don't want to say too much because Ahmed's listening, but um, <laughs> I'm going to be throwing a mix of lures, top orders, cranks, plastics, um, and I'm going to be travelling a bit today. Yeah. All right, and uh, hopefully we can do a cross to you and uh, see you put some fish in the well. We should be able to, maybe sort of around lunchtime. Um, I don't know if I have coverage in the morning, but um, yeah, yeah. All right, mate, good luck. Don't get too nervous. So there we are, Ahmet and Dan, all set for a big day two on the Hawkesbury. We have a few more anglers to chat to. The man that we do want to talk to is our day one leader, Jamie McEwen. He is defending champion. And boy, did he start his title defence with a great first day. He's around here somewhere. Let's see if we can track him down. Here he is, Jamie McEwen in his wall paint, all ready for a, for a big fight on the Hawkesbury today, mate. Oh, yeah. Come on, I don't want to get my feet wet, come to me. How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty good, mate, pretty good. It's just, uh, today's just about me keeping up, I guess. Like, the Hawkesbury's not my uh, strong venue, so I'd be stoked with three kilo. I'll be stoked with five fish first, and then three kilo would be good, and I just need to sort of stay around that, that pointy end. I, I, I don't expect to be sitting in first after today, but... We'll see. Now, two years ago when you won this event, you were second after day one, second after day two, and you charged through the win on day three. Yep. Now, by your own admission, you're not really confident about Hawkesbury, no. but you did find them two years ago. Yep. The areas that you fished two years ago, is that where you're going today? Or, or new water? No, exactly the same. Not changed. I haven't been here since then, so I don't know what... Uh, what sort of goes on here that much so I'll, uh, I'll be heading into Cowan to do some uh, some top water first I love fishing top water and then I will get out and go up river you know probably around eight eight o'clock I guess eight nine o'clock so we have a very talented field 24 anglers and it's pretty close you know you've got a 700 gram lead above uh, second but below that it's pretty tight who, who are you worried about who who do you think is possibly going to run you down oh, mate it could be anyone like it's the the bags that are you know possibility to come out of here are huge so you know it's as you know three day tournament it can be anyone in the top 10 can can sort of get up and even out the top outside of the top 10 it's pretty close too so i reckon you know hickson's hickson's really experienced on the hawkesbury won the grand final here um you know the the local guys are you know the guys sitting in second and third also fish here fairly regularly too so it's it's anyone's mate so and, and as we said a few times over the last couple of days the two venues both potentially produce five and maybe even a six kilo bag so you can never sit comfortably no no that's exactly right and that's that's what i was it's still 
a long, a long tournament left to, to fish out, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, mate. Good luck. There we are, our leader after day one, defending champion Jamie McEwen. We might uh, scoot on down the uh, pontoon here and we might go have a bit of a chat to Steve Morgan. We spent a lot of time with Steve yesterday when we are doing the live feed. Uh, he's always a great communicator about what he does and how he does it. So uh, let's go have a bit of a chat to him. Oh, he's coming? Uh, uh, we do a we'll do a quick chat to Steve and then we might talk to Chris Hickson. Here he is, Steve. How are you feeling about day two, mate? We're on the uh, Hawkesbury. Uh, yeah, Hawkesbury's awesome. I pre-fished here. I love fishing the place. I get to fish it about once every, you know, what, two years. Um, went for a practice. They were eating top order, so guess where I'm going to be today? Throwing Cicada stuff. country. Yeah, I hope so. Look, cicadas or bents or whatever they're going to eat. It was funny. Like, I, it used to be always cicadas up there, but last time I went, bent minnows went all right. So it's uh, let the fish tell me what's going on, and hopefully I get those big blue noses coming up and slurping those things down. And, you know, we, we get big bags and potentially, you know, those those record-setting bags on the hard in the Hawkesbury so this tournament is not a fate to complete we can't just assume that Jamie's going to run away with it oh no we've been telling Jamie that too watch out mate the guys are going to come and get you but um, look it's it's because there's two venues it's like yeah no one's got the, the the juice on both of the spots and we're talking to Jamie last night and he's he's got a solid plan but it's you know you could easily come in with two kilos instead of four kilos see what happens today all right mate have fun Thank go you. fishing all right, so there we are. We've chatted to some of the guys. Chris Hickson over here, uh, as Jamie said, he's one of the anglers to watch. And essentially anybody in the top 15 is an angler to watch because, as I've said many times, this waterway, just like Sydney Harbour, holds some stunning fish. It's going to be a close and very interesting day. Yeah, he left his phone at home. He had to go back and get it. Oh, okay. Look at the Ronin. It's like so heavy, man. <laughs> My arm is like dead. Just, just like zip tied to your penis. Yeah, I got, I, I, I got a fishing belt so I can see. A gimbal belt. Just the other side of the ranger. Comes that rain. Yeah, you see it coming on the trees there. Oh yeah, one little bit of. Yeah, mate, if you got one. Oh. Yeah, you say that now. Do you want to talk to anyone else on like that? Do you want to get? Do you want to call Liam in and have a drink under him? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be great to chat to. Him. What? What? Thank you, man. What is the time? How much we got? Six forty-seven. We still got plenty of time. Liam. No, no, it's for you to keep the water off the lens. Just to make life a bit funner with holding it with one arm. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's putting their wet weathers on. Taka said his were all wet. It's wet weathers. You had to go in to get the fucking bung. Oh, did he have them on at the time? Yeah, he fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> We've all done it. Yeah, he fucked up so hard. <laughs> I rocked up and I'm like, fuck, he's taken my jacket. Luckily, I had this jumper and the. Can we just have a bit of a yak, mate? Sorry about my right. It's alright, it's not your fault. Are you right to go live today as well? Uh, you'll have to send yeah. him the What was your name, mate? Sorry? Nathan. Nathan. Right here. Yeah. Well, there's for some reason the app won't um, log in or might have downloaded the app. That's okay. like a said something else. Uh, okay. Okay. We'll, um, we'll get Nicole to have a yarn to you and stuff okay. when we go live. Are oh, you going to have sort of snow? Yeah, yeah I should have. Right here, man. All right, with us we have Liam Carruthers, the short and tall of it all. 
Liam, we were chatting before, mate. Uh, you're probably a little bit uh, disappointed with day one. It didn't quite play out with uh, how you were hoping. Yeah, mate, uh, 100% disappointed yesterday. Uh, Australian Open's a 100% conversion sort of uh, tournament, I believe, and it's a, a test of the true anglers. So whoever wins the Open usually really earns it, and you can't make silly mistakes. Yesterday I made some rookie errors, uh, boat positioning. I was pretty rusty on the water, so I'm hoping those lost fish don't bite me. Today is moving day, and the Hawkesbury is uh, renowned for big bags, so we'll see how we go. Now, you're in good form on this waterway. The last time there was a tournament here, you won that. Granted, it was a team's event. Yeah, yeah, that's correct, mate. So um, fairly similar conditions, sort of a, a coming off a big swell. And I, I really hope that um, what we did in the bets not that long ago can uh, sort of replicate today. There's some big fish in those areas. And um, again, finding the fish is one thing, but extracting them is another. So we'll, we'll have a we'll have a real hot dig. We'll position the boat a lot better than we did yesterday. And the um, main thing is we'll have fun. And uh, it's all, all, all go from here. Like I've got nothing to lose and just got to swing hard. Sitting in 12th place, hump day, middle day, or in your case, moving day. Good luck. Moving day, thanks, Tom. There we are, Liam Carruthers, another one of our anglers in the dye at Broome Australian Open. It's raining and we are getting close to the takeoff. It's going to be a great day too. I can't wait. Okay, so he's ready yeah, to go. Yeah, he's, he's launched. And I thought he did it. Really yes. How good am I? Look, I'm going to bring him through. Yeah, very well. Uh, one of the things I was really impressed about is how these are doing things. Oh, yeah, that was great. Yeah. Yeah. And as I was talking to the car last night, there was a lot of stuff we did. Yeah. 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 Well, we were the audio yesterday. Yeah, I know. We've got a lot of it. I know. She, she got upset when I told her. So I'm not saying you did a bad It was an awesome job. Yeah. It's just that, it's that we shouldn't leave that, that no, good I mean, live, not even live, that good I'm fishing stuff on the ground. Because we'll use, I think we'll probably use the Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm going to just go through the stuff. And I, I did a obviously a montage as well. A couple of months ago. Probably on my Facebook page. Uh, no, we tried to clean it. Testing, testing. And uh, we may try to get the talk to the people that we want to talk to people. Uh, the signal. Depends. Telstra, the whole river. Yeah. I know Jamie said he might struggle. I'll, I'll struggle. Mm -hmm. But I'll be going to film a couple of them. Yeah. And I've got, I can film them on the phone and I can trim them and I'll send it to the trim ones. So if I do it, I'll do a narrative with it as well. Yeah. But yeah, it's important to have someone at that end to, to be able to prepare those and keep them up. Yeah. Yeah. Dan will be doing fish all day today, so Nicole won't have to be doing any okay, fish. Okay guys, we've got about um, just over five minutes to go. I'll get you all to move that. The, uh, to my right, amongst all the yachts and stuff here. Oh no, that's because Dan was just updating. When you get updates for we'll 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 take a minute to we'll update we'll it all. And if you hit it again before it updates, it'll feel a little bit to it. Yeah, so if that happens, you just do another read. You know that Dan, you know, if you hit refresh, update scoreboard too many times too quickly, you have an error where it goes potential. So when you hit update scoreboard, don't hit it every every capture. Oh, okay, yeah. Just yeah. do a few captures and then hit it because yeah. it hasn't updated. Yeah. It, it adds it, it, on the scoreboard it comes up as a pin fish. Oh okay. Yeah, right. so yeah. I don't think it's told you that. No, 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 no. So don't I normally well I'll, I'll just if even if one fish comes through, do it up yeah. the scoreboard. But but if you do another one like right then, yeah. don't hit like it takes about sixty seconds oh, to update. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. so just 
Just every couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know, put two or three fish in. Yeah. Uh, or, or do the few that we've got in the update. So, I know, I know instinctively you want to update after each one, but it actually takes six seconds to do all the algorithms, so. Hey, Brian. Tommy might have to be checked out on the way out. Yep. Got five minutes. Well, good man, you guys get some good stuff this morning? Yeah. I think it's a Tommy, isn't it, in the drill cap? That's uh, Tommy. Tommy up on two, because he's on two wheels, that's Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> he's just going to park it on the ramp and it's all done. Yeah. 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 No, we haven't checked out, so. Yeah, 5 2. 55. Well, he's just pulled up, so you're right there, though. You can find me. Yeah, just let him come in and put his boat in. His boat's there, yeah. He just had long, he's got his phone. You know what this generation's like, mate? If they haven't got their phone, they fall to bits. Oh, wait a sec, it's an app tournament. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he, if you should have talked to me, I'd just give you got another iPad there. Yeah. You could just log yeah. in the iPad and do it there. So. <clears throat> Awesome. I've had it on since like February now, so it's 13 months old. And all I do is hose it. Look at it, it's all stainless, quiet. Spot lock's amazing. So I like it. It's it's survey controlled, but it's exactly like a cable stick one, and there's no torque in it. So. Have you used the gas? Yeah. I've looked at the bits of the gas. That's the game. Oh, I got it when I said I was going to use it. Yeah. I want to see a stop for a breeze at half over the bar. Okay guys, oh, okay. just um, about two and a half minutes till we take off. Pardon? Andy Chu. No, I don't think so, you'd be Wally Pay. Yep. Here's your umbrella, mate. One minute to go.
30 seconds. Okay, Jamie. The machine's fun. Two, so I might one, go pay for it. Go. Yeah. Number one, Jamie McEwen. Yeah, I'm going to stand next to Dan. Number two, Armoured Mafood. Number three, Daniel Bonacorso. Number four, Luke Rogan. Number five, Michael Colatoris. Six, Blake Grady. Number seven, Christopher Hickson. You go, Chris. Number eight, Mark Crompton. Keep pushing up, fellas. Let's go. Number 10, Peter Phelps. You turn me up just a little bit, Simon. I don't think they hit here. Number 10, Peter Phelps. Number 11, Jamie Johnson. Liam Carruthers. 13, Brett Crow. 14, Wally Fay. 15, Brett Penfraze. 16, Frank Carabetta. 17, Leo Yu. 18, Steve Morgan. Um, okay. 19, Taka Kawasaki. 20, Bernard Kong. 21, Dennis Metzdorf. 22, Steve Duff. 23, Travis Ryan. 24, Cohen Moranti. tournament fans and welcome to day two of the Daiwa Brim Australian Open. Once again we are at Daiwa HQ. There's no rain in the studio but there is a little bit out on the course for the anglers today. Now of course you have just finished watching a recap clip of the start from this morning. 24 uh, anglers made the start line a little bit bleary eyed this morning after a big day on Sydney Harbour. Of course the Open is a three-day tournament, two days on Sydney Harbour 
one day on the Hawkesbury, and that's where they are today. Uh, it was a uh, it, it was a it was a slow start in many ways. Uh, we had a couple of anglers who uh, one of them forgot to put the bungs in his boat, and one of them left his phone at home. And of course, having your mobile phone is very important because the scoring for this event is done via their mobile phone and the app. And the great thing about using the app is you have live scores that you can watch throughout the day. And speaking of live, we are live in studio each day of the tournament from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. We are going to bring you analysis and live footage from out on the course each day of the tournament. So it makes for a special event. So uh, it's a great way to spend three days in Sydney watching some of the best brim anglers in the country do their thing. Um, now we... Now, yesterday we were on the harbour, we had pretty good phone signal and we could keep in touch with most of the anglers and we had constant scores coming through. Of course, the Hawkesbury is not quite so gifted when it comes to phone coverage. So when you're watching the scoreboard, if you're seeing anglers perhaps not featuring on the scoreboard, it's probably a reflection of their phone service are and wide throughout the Hawkesbury today. So we may not see them feature on the scoreboard until a little bit later in the session. Nonetheless, we've had plenty of anglers punch scores through today. Uh, we've had a lot of fish captures come through via um, images, uh, still images that they text through, and we've also had some videos come through of their great captures. So the anglers have got amongst them so far. A um, couple of the standouts that popped to mind. Wally Fay caught a 41 centimetre fish this morning, a good quality fish. And of course, uh, the scores via the length weight curve, a 41 centimetre brim, comes in at 1.54 kilo. So it is a solid fish. Armand, who was sitting in second place. No. No. Come on, come on, boy. Good girl. I don't have to boy her a girl. No. That's one of them. Oh, look at that donkey. Look at that donkey. Oh, well done. Yeah. Yes. Oh, look at the girl from that thing. Tried to bury you a few times. We got the video of the capture come through, but uh, so far he hasn't logged it into the app. He's um, on his phone to be able to log it into the app. So we're still waiting to see what that fish measured. And that gives you a bit of a run through of what some of the anglers have done so far. As I mentioned, the scoreboard is very much a reflection of who's got phone signal as much as it is a reflection of who's caught what today. Um, Chris Hickson was sitting at the top of the scoreboard bag that he would want to have to possibly, um, you know, challenge for the win. But uh, today is the weather. Now, yesterday we had blue skies, lightish winds in this morning. Uh, hopefully getting a good top water bite this morning with that weather. So um, fingers crossed that uh, it plays out as they've hoped. Um, when we chatted to Dan and Armour this morning, Armour had everyone... Whatever he decided to do, it worked early with that big fish that he, um, he caught. And a one and a half kilo fish, so uh, a great job by Wally there. Pete has uh, four fish in the mover and shaker today, watching him live and watching him catch third place with a 10 fish limit for 6.635. Jamie McEwen, he has logged two fish into the app at a 700 gram lead over second. Um, but Jamie, as I mentioned, he's, uh, he's fishing far and wide today and has limited phone signals, so we'll keep an eye on him as we progress through the day. Chris Hicks and I'm kilos. So that's a bit of a rundown on what the anglers have done uh, early this morning. Uh, we'll keep those catches coming through and sharing them with you. We have a special guest in studio this morning, and uh, we are going to chat to him very soon. Uh, a guy who is very famili familiar with the Brim Australian Open has fished many before we chat to our in-studio guest. We have Cromo coming up soon. Yeah, this morning we were looking at the rain radar before and there's plenty of plenty of showers coming through. The observers have um no. So Chris Hickson is our leader so far, 10 fish for 6.759 kilos. Um, yesterday he had 3.213 for his five. Today he's already approved upon that. 
He has five fish for three point leave. Chris is fishing Brisbane waters. And for the for people who don't know, um, the the open on the Hawkesbury, we start at Pittwater, which is on the southern end of the Hawkesbury system. And Brisbane waters is just on the northern side. So um, we're, we're at day two of the open. Jamie McEwen sitting in second place at the moment. You there? Hang on. Yeah, yeah, I've got you. How you going? Yeah, it started. Um, started. <laughs> I got wiped out a couple of times. So, <laughs> so um, I've I've been wet. Uh, we've we've uh, we've lost him, so we're going to try and patch him through. Phone signal can be very difficult on the Hawkesbury, depending on who who you have your phone service with. So we're going to try and get Mark up again. So we have the scoreboard on the screen there. You can see Chris Hickson at the lead with uh, with ten fish. Jamie in second with seven. Michael Colaturis full limit today. So all up he has 10 fish for 6.635 kilos, holding down third place. And Luke Rogan sitting in fourth with five, 10 fish for five points. Yep. Yep, you got me. Yep. You good? <laughs> Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm on the spot that I actually, uh, I did really well last year. Same tide, same everything. I was just waiting for it to get to the right time of day to come up here. And uh, I've just sort of pulled up in here. I just got my fifth fish. So I'm just waiting on the lid. Yeah, and I've, I think I dropped, what is it, times recently. Yeah, if you're getting the chances at those sort of things, I guess, i just got to get lucky now. So you've got an in-feet rod in your hand there. What do you got tied on the end? Ah, oh, it's a cranker crab. <laughs> I've got a 65mm uh, a cranker crab. I've got uh, six pound um, the J-thread finesse. Um, and I've got six pound um, Evo, actually. I'm, ru I'm running the Evo. And um, I'm fishing pretty deep. I'm fishing sort of yeah, between 10 to 7 metres. And, so, um, so looking, looking at the screen, the shoreline's just to the left of you. Run us through what you're doing yep. technique-wise. So basically, I'm fishing a boulder, mate. I'm fishing one boulder. I know it well. Uh, to, you know, you, you, you're casting up. It's, I'm not going to say it's easy. <laughs> I've got to be honest. You get in the lure. You make a lot of casts for nothing, for not getting in the right spot. You're basically casting up as far as you can. And then trying to predict how long it takes to get down it's 10 meters deep you've got a sag in the line that's going to be running out i'm looking like my rod is out here i'm really fishing up there so to be able to say it's easy it's it's a balancing game it's almost like riding a clutch kind of thing once you you know i'm casting up right in ahead of me it's going to take about 10 seconds 10 or 12 seconds to sink 10 meters um and my line is going to sink at the same sort of, well, probably not the same rate, but it's going to sink and belly down. So you'll see in a second, once I get the lure down into the sweet sort of zone, um, and mind you, I'm fishing a boulder that's just here. I've got to try and predict when that's going to get to here, work it past it in the right sort of fashion, and then I only really get about maybe 10 or 12 seconds of, of good fishing time on that boulder and then I bring it in and I do it again. So it's, it's, it can be pretty technical, really. You sort of got to, you really got to pay attention a lot. So, it, you know, it's, it's almost so like the old black fishing bite, staring are, at are your Are you float. feeling for the bite or are you watching the line for that telltale tick? Uh, both, mate, both, both. You sort of, um, you know, there's, there's part of it now. Um, you sort of, you know, you know yourself you want to drag along the bottom a bit but at the same time you just yeah it's <laughs> you take what you can get yeah you, you, you're feeling for everything you're feeling for the bits and pieces and you'll go yeah that's over a rock yeah that's hitting the bottom again that's you know that's a fish so it's um 
yeah, it can be it can be pretty difficult at times, but uh, you know that's part and parcel of it. Well, Mark, we're so. going to uh, we're going to leave you on screen, and we're we're going to let you do your thing. And, and uh, I'm not I'm not going to chat to you. I'm actually going to I'm going to turn to my right and chat to a guy that we have in studio with us, uh, a man who I mentioned is very familiar with the uh, with the Broom Australian Open, having fished it in the past. Um, both as a team's event and also as an individual event. Greg Seto, welcome to the studio. Thanks, Simon. It's been a um, long time since I've been interrogated by you, so <laughs> I think it's probably uh, about eight or nine years. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's, um, it's been an interesting evolution. You, know, you, you joined the tournament scene as an angler. Yep. You joined the Daiwa family. And now you're part of the, uh, the little empire that we have here, Daiwa Australia. Yeah, it's been a, um, a long and... Uh, really rewarding journey actually. I, I think I started um, fishing ABT events in about 2006 or 2007. Um, had no idea what I was doing. I'd sort of been fishing for uh, maybe about eight or nine months on my own and wasn't having much luck and I came across um, the, uh, the ABT events and there happened to be one on Sydney Harbour in I think it was Jan or Feb of yeah. 2007 and I thought okay I'll put my name down have a crack hopefully I learn something from you know the guys that I was fishing with and yeah. you know the rest is history as they say. It, it was a perfect fit because you wanted to know more and you were happy to ask the questions and ABT the motto was always who shares wins yeah. so you had the questions and we and the anglers had the answers to help you evolve yeah. as an angler. Yeah 100% so you know I, I think that um that first event was a real eye-opener for me, uh, not just around techniques and, you know, um, uh, fishing styles and locations and whatnot, but, you know, it was a real um, eye-opener in terms of what the community of ABT was about and what the tournament scene was about in Australia, and I think that that really resonated with me. I had um, two... Uh, two interesting boaters that day. I think Richard Potter was uh, was one of them. Yeah. That was a, a, a very interesting experience <laughs> flying around to uh, Middle Harbour in his uh, in his skeeter, you know, the first time on a big yeah. bass boat. You were straight into the frying pan. Straight into the frying pan, yep. Um, and then, you know, the next day I was fishing out of a tinny with, uh, I think it was uh, Neil Kelly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, very, very different experiences, but rewarding nonetheless. And, and, you know, that's one of the great things about a tournament is the diversity, diversity in personalities, boats, techniques, approaches, mentalities. It's a, it's a real melting pot. Mm, yeah, so I think um, from that experience, uh, what I gathered out of it was that, you know, the community for the most part was really, really open to sharing. Um, a couple of years later, I went to Tassie to the Derwent. Mm -hmm. um, first time fishing Tasmania, never been there before. I went as a non-boater. Uh, and I put a call out on, I think it was the ABT forums or something, you know, asking if someone was uh, willing to give me a ride. And yeah. I got this um, strange text message from uh, a guy called Lee McKenzie. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, Lee generously... Uh, offered for me to pre-fish with him on the Derwent. You know, it was a personal best yeah. on top of a personal best, etc. And uh, it was just, it was just a really, really magnificent experience. And you know, to this day, Lee and I are still mates. Uh, we don't speak to each other every day of the, uh, every week of the mm. year, but you know, we'll probably catch up with each other on the phone a couple of times a year. And um, it, it, it's, it's, it's great. You make lifelong friends out of it. That's exactly right. And, um, you know, you, you connect with the people and, and you, as a, as a developing angler, you also, also connected with a brand and, of course, that brand was Daiwa. Yeah. Yeah. So, very early on... Um, Me. Just, just like you. And um, I think, uh, I guess it's like any tend to uh, resonate with the values, focus on the fine details, you know, uh, Daiwa really resonated with me, and um, you know, since that day, uh, I've been a Daiwa supporter. And the very famous saying here one yep. day, which we quite often refer to. Yep. And would you like to share that with the folks? Yeah. Look, I think um, I asked our sponsored angler team uh, one day. Uh, you know, what was it about Daiwa that uh, that drew you to the brand? That that you know um, that uh, resonates with you and Grayson. Uh, very eloquently 
put it uh, that fishing is like ice cream. So we all like ice yeah. cream. But dye was uh, like the sprinkles that you put on the top <laughs> of the ice cream and just make it that little bit more special. Nice. Yeah. That's a, that's a real Graysonism. Yes, a real Graysonism. <laughs> now, we've seen great evolutions when it comes to dye and its, and its tackle. We've also seen great evolutions in the tournaments. And what we're doing for the Open is certainly one of, one of those next level steps, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, look, I started fishing... Uh, the Open in 2008, mm -hmm. I think with my brother Ian, that was the first time, it was a teams event, and I think I fished every Open from then until 2013, I think 14 didn't happen, is that right? No, we took, yeah, yeah, we took a break. Yeah, so, um, till 2013, and, you know, the evolution from the teams event, which was when it went to an individual event, um, I just found it that much more rewarding and, and that much more challenging, um, the premier event on the calendar, because it's you against the fish yeah. and, and that's, that's all it is. I think um, what we're doing now as a brand uh, in terms of um, our, our presence in the digital space uh, really lends itself to this format uh, of uh, reporting of the event that uh, that we've come up with this year. Now, uh, you've got a few uh, little, uh, I suppose, nostalgic rods uh, yeah. to, to the side there, and you've had those a long time, and they obviously mean a lot to you because you have not let them go, considering you don't fish much anymore. No. Um, again, you know, we talk about a love affair with a brand. Well, these were probably my first love. So, <laughs> um, you know, and uh, I've got a couple here. Um, I've got uh, some of the old original Heartland uh, rods and one of the old uh, Battler rods. But, you know, we talk about innovation and we talk about the, the finer details. I mean, you look at how these things are packaged up in the yeah. rod bag. I yeah. mean, that felt rod bag, and I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you know, you open that up and they're all lined yeah. inside. And it's just it's just those fine details. I remember the first Heartland ZI, guys. I think it was a green bag like you've got there, and I zipped it open, and it was either orange velour or purple velour inside. Orange velour. Orange velour. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this is 10 plus years ago that they re released this, so, well, you know, the, they left no stone unturned. No. Every, every part of the product was was designed to the tea and, and designed to wow the angler. Yeah, and, and that's what it's about. I mean, the Daiwa brand, um, you know, we have five kind of key core values as a brand, and the first one is to make it wow. So yeah. everything that we do as a brand is to make that experience wow. Um, I... I um, I think that, uh, and it's not just about our experience and making our experience well. I think uh, everything that we're trying to do is to try and engage as many anglers as possible and as many new anglers as possible as well. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, that's what the future of this sport is, is the new entrants, the new participants that are coming through all the time. Uh, as an industry is coming into the sport, for the first time in probably a decade. Yeah. Um, and so as a brand, Daiwa is all about making those moments wow to, to really engage those mm. new anglers. Mm. And I think um, what we want to do is to grow our sport and uh, make it accessible to everyone. And, you know, in today's age, th there are so many things that pulls upon people's time and interest. Yeah. Um, you know, with COVID, we've had, you know, in the last, you know, tw 12 months, a lot of people have sort of gone back to those more traditional activities, you know, the, the outdoors and in our case, fishing. And, and that was, it was very satisfying to see people, you know, connect with what, you know, something that we love so much. Yeah, it has been really satisfying. I mean, I've always been passionate about it. Um, you know, I think the, that ABT, um, the values of ABT are obviously, uh, are obviously pointed in that direction as well. You know, that who shares yep. wins motto. Um, as a brand, Daiwa has had a long association with Hobie. Uh, Hobie also has a very, very clear um, focus on trying to increase participation in the industry. Um, you know, I think that uh, Hobie does it really, really well. Uh, I think that, um, you know, ABT has always done it really well. Uh, when I was 
uh, fishing back in the day, um, more so than what I am now. Uh, you know, we started what was the first yeah. digital blog yeah. um, in Australia uh, that revolved around fishing. And, and the whole focus was about making fishing accessible to everybody. Mm. You know, uh, my brothers and I, you know, Chris and Ian, and, you know, eventually uh, um, Josh Carpenter and Vic Lear joined us uh, at Lure and Fly. Mm. Um, you know, I, I would say that, you know, the fact that I got involved with ABT tournaments was probably a little bit out of the ordinary coming from no, you know, coming yep. from nothing. Yeah. Oh, zero to hero kind of thing. Yeah, it, it can be really hard for people, you know, that they're standing on the outside, they're, they're not really sure about how to take that step. It can be intimidating. And, and you guys, like many, you know, millions of people throughout the world could have stayed on the outside, but you took that step and you asked the questions and, and, that, and that's what we want people to take the step. And ABT motto, who shares wins, mm. and then making that information around fishing accessible to everybody. Um, the angler now is an influencer. Yeah. Um, we were uh, in the industry probably one of the first influencers mm. as we know them now. Yeah. Uh, it's evolved a long way since when, when we were there. Um, but, you know, Daiwa is all about making fishing accessible to everyone and, and giving everybody that uh, fishing experience. Now, you mentioned that you guys were relatively inexperienced when you came into the, to the tournament fishing landscape. You guys acquired those skills quite well, and your brother, Ian, he actually won the Australian Open twice. Yeah, bugger. Back, back <laughs> to back, he's the only person ever to do it. Back to back. I think um, the first year he won uh, is probably my most memorable Australian Open. Uh, not just because my brother won it, and, yep. you know, obviously Chris and I were extremely proud of him for doing that. Um, but uh, also because, you know, uh, I choked it out on uh, day three <laughs> of that event. I think I went into day three uh, sitting 40 grams behind uh, Russell Babacule across a patch of fish on the, at the end of the second day. And I think I upgraded maybe three or four times on this patch of fish. And stupidly, in hindsight, I said to myself, I'm going to leave these here for tomorrow. Yeah. And guess what? They weren't there they tomorrow. They weren't there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, it's, um, you know, that's, and that's one of the, the, the beauties about fishing these events. You know, you've only got yourself um, to question later. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's one of the fun things that, that I get to do as, a, as an analyzer of the sport and what the guys do in the water. You chat to them, you know, at the end of the day, like two o'clock after they've done it, and, and they, they reflect on their day, speak to them again the next morning and they spent the whole night running it through their head, what I should have done different, I should have ying when I yang. It's, um, yeah. Fishing is as much about, tournament fishing is as much about what goes on your head as what's in your hand. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and I'd also add to, to that, for me, um, I always class myself as an, an average angler at best, right? You know, I was happy to have a go and and um, I, I really loved it. I, I really enjoyed the, the competition. I, I, I really enjoyed the camaraderie with the people. But you know, for me, um, I never went in there with expectations that I was ever gonna be at the pointy yeah. end. Um, and to be sitting there 40 grams behind first place at the end of the second day, you know, that really plays on your mind. It sounds like it still eats away at you. Uh, it does still eat away <laughs> at me occasionally. You know, the boys here keep telling me that I need to come out of retirement. <laughs> and, um, um, you know, you never say never. Yeah, and, um, and, yeah, and it's a big thing to, to be on the tournament trail. And especially if you want to be competitive, you need to spend a lot of time on the water, don't you? That was always the challenge for me. Um, and that was one of, the, one of the really great things that I liked seeing the evolution of... ABT during the time that I was there. I think that when I first um, came along the guys uh, and then over time as my kids came along um, we ended up turning them into family road trips yeah. and because I was fishing uh, the scene, you know, the, the, the tour with, with two of my brothers it became an extended family yeah. road trip and, and you know we, we'd Nikki still says to me now, she misses those days where we'd jump in the car on a Thursday afternoon, yeah. take off for a week, um, you know, 
our, our favourite experience probably was fishing um, Tasmania. Yeah. Uh, what year was it, Simon? Probably 2007, 08. 07, 08, yeah. maybe. Um, and uh, the whole family came. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and Nikki still remembers waving us all off at St Helens, you know, as we went out yeah. in the afternoon, the kids playing around on the water's oh, edge. Yeah. Uh, and and that, was, that was a really great thing, you know, to see the number of uh, guys bringing their families along but also the number of, you know, really, really talented female anglers getting mm. involved as well. And I think that that's something that, uh, as a sport, we need to really foster and encourage. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Mate, uh, well, thank you very much for your time. No worries. You have work meetings to get to. I do have work meetings to get to. And, you know, I just, uh, I have been watching the, uh, the coverage and uh, sort of thinking, hmm, Maybe, maybe the, the time's the coming. For it. Yeah, maybe the time's coming, but um, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, best of luck to all the anglers out there. I know that um, the Australian Open, it, it really is about consistency, and and I think that if you can bring in a, a, a half decent bag of three fish, uh, of five fish over three days, then you put yourself in with a pretty good chance. So of, yeah. You can't always rule yourself out. Well, I think, um, Simon, I guess my, my last point is probably that, you know, back when I was fishing it, I would have been happy with three bags, uh, three bags of three and a half kilos each day um, and, and thinking that, uh, you know, you're in with a chance. But uh, these days, you know, that's, uh, that's nothing. The anglers are definitely getting much better. Uh, obviously, the techniques are, are getting much better. And uh, it's one of the reasons why, as a brand, we continue to support ABT is because this is where the innovation happens. Yeah. These, this is where the run-of-the-mill techniques that everybody uses in two or three years' time, they come out of these tournaments. And, and that's one of the real reasons that we support it because it's kind of fostering that innovation, which is another core value for Dyla. Nice. Well, sitting on his past history with this great event, I'm looking at the scoreboard on the screen there, and it looks like Jamie McEwen may have worked himself to the head of the pack. Uh, he's got a four fish limit at the moment for 2.531, so all up he has nine fish for the two days, 7.37. Chris Hickson is now in second place. He has a four limit, 10 fish for 6.759 kilos. So it's going to be an interesting day and an interesting Daiwa Brim Australian Open. Michael Colaturis is holding down third place. He now also has a full limit on day two, so uh, well done to the guys. Um, of course, our anglers and our observers are sending through their catches uh, through to the ABT bat farm. <laughs> fish there by Pete. Awesome stuff. All right, I'm going to bring the tournament up on my uh, tournament app up on my phone and we'll have a see what some of the recent catches are that we've had come through. Just bear with me while I scroll down and get the data. So on my app, I have the last 10 catches that have come through. So Luke Rogan is the most recent angler to submit a catch. Um, Taka Kawasaki, is, uh, he has had two fish in quick succession, one at 10.43 and one at 10.50. So Taka is amongst them. Uh, Dennis Metzdorf, there from Luke in the three fish, actually, in the last 10 catches. So Luke's on a bit of a roll at the moment as well. We have live coverage today from 10 a.m. through to 1 p.m. Now we might struggle to get some of the anglers actually live today because uh, the Hawkesbury has limited coverage compared to Sydney Harbour. Uh, we'll have enough coverage though that we can uh, spend a bit of time with quite a few of the anglers, but we may not get all of them. Uh, when we chatted to Steve Morgan this morning, he said he was going to be fishing up river up Cowan. I think he was going to be chasing. Um, Top water munching brim, and we have limited service up there. But he did say he was going to record some pieces to his phone. And Peter Phelps is moving to fifth place. He has four fish today, 
all up nine fish for 5.225 kilos. Luke Rogan in fourth, Michael Colaturis in third, Chris Hickson in second, and Jamie McEwen is in first. Jamie, of course, is our defending champion and was a leader after day one, and he's still in the number one spot. Armour Mafud was in second place after day one. We have no catches lodged for him so far. He's in third, 13th place at the moment, but as I said earlier, um, he will log his scores as he gets back into um, service with his farm. He's going to have a limited signal today. At the moment, he has one fish, sorry, uh, yeah, one fish logged into the system for 280 grams. Looking at the window here at Daiwa HQ, it is a lot cloudier and overcast on day two than it was on day one. The forecast today was a 30% chance of rain. Tomorrow it ramps up to, I think, 80% chance of rain. And uh, I think the guys will get quite wet tomorrow when they are back on the harbour for day three of the open. Looking at the rain radar there on the screen, you can see those little patches over the Sydney region. And overcast and rain. We're seeing some catches roll through on the screen. Dennis Metzdorf there with a fish. Anglers observers. That looks like Mark Crompton. Look at that donkey! Look at that donkey! Oh, well done! Yeah! Yes! Yeah. Oh, look at the girl from that thing! Wow! Look at that! Another four more. Look at that, that's a uh, one and a half kilo. At least! Tried to bury you a few times. Yeah, boy, yeah, mate. Mm. Yeah. I'm not gonna swear. That's a good start. That's a good Stuff. He's on the electric leading it out. Oh, he's, a, he's a nice fish.
Well done. He's 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 probably about one point one, one point two. Oh wow. just fell out. About a fish, Blake. That? About a fish? Yeah, good one. One that's gonna help me. Oh. 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 That's how you go fishing without the with the worst net job ever, but we got it in. I got it on camera too, sorry. Ah oh, beautiful. <laughs> I mate, I'm not ashamed to make it for myself. As long as I get these things in the boat, I don't care. Woo! Beautiful. You'll have the chance for showers or thunderstorms and also little disturbances rumbling along this thing will bring us a chance for rain. back live to Iowa HQ. We've just uh, had a look at some of the catches from earlier today and some of the great uh, Daiwa ads that we have running through our marketing landscape at the moment. So we are having, as I suggested, trouble getting some of our anglers on the line. Limited uh, phone service out on Hawkesbury. It is a big, big system and a long way between towers, sadly. Um, we might have one teed up very soon though. Uh, do a bit of a recap, our day one leader 2.53, nine fish in the can for two days, 7.307, Chris Hickson, he, uh, he came out of the gates lightning fast this morning, he has a full limit today for 3.546, he's holding down second with 10 fish for 6.759 kilos, Michael Colaturis, full limit day two, sitting in third place, 10 fish for 6.635 kilos, Luke Rogan in fourth, and Peter Phelps, our very own bass man. He is sitting in fifth place with 5.225 kilos. Cromo, another one of our Daiwa guys in sixth place with 10 fish for 4.87. Got a five fish, limit, five fish limit today. Only a small limit so far, 1.66 kilos. Kicker fish in his bag, 930 grams. Standout fish that we've had come through today is Wally Fay, four, uh, 41 centimetres it was, 
a cracking fish. He has two fish in his bag, uh, three fish in his bag this morning for 2.268. He's sneaking into the top 10. He's currently in seventh place. We have four big brim prizes for the tournament. Uh, we have Daiwa Infeet rods to give away, plus a reel as well for the four heaviest fish for the tournament. Uh, yesterday, the biggest fish that came through was 38 centimetres and belonged to Brett Penpraise. I can, I can hear the crackle of an angler on a live feed, so hopefully we can get them onto the screen very soon. Now, the Brim Australian Open has been running since 2004. It initially started as a three-day teams event on Sydney Harbour, uh, and then we ran that for a few years. It took a bit of a hiatus uh, in the mid-2010s, um, and it made a comeback in 2017. Uh, Reintroduced, thank you to Graeme Franklin, who was instrumental in getting that event up and running. Uh, it was a teams event, as I mentioned, all the way up until 2010, and then 2011 we swapped it over and made it a boater-only event. No non-boaters, just the boater all by themselves with an observer in the boat to keep them honest and also take care of any media that we could get them to do for the event. Um, we have a few multiple uh, winners of this event fishing this tournament. Uh, Steve Morgan has won it both as an individual and also in a team. Uh, he won it in 2010, fishing with his brother, Tim. Uh, Chris Hickson has won it as a boater as well. Uh, in 2011, Chris won that event. And uh, Ian Cito, brother of uh, Greg that we had on before, Ian won it as well uh, two times, 2012 and 2013, uh, when it was both the Daiwa and then the following year, it was the Yamaha Brim Australian Open. All right, sounds like we are going to have Michael Colaturis with us very soon. We spent a bit of time with Michael yesterday afternoon, uh, probably longer than we spent with any angler doing live yesterday, and it was great. It was great viewing. We got to hang out with him, let him do his thing, and we also saw him catch a great fish and the emotion of getting that solid fish into the boat. We are live with Michael Colaturis now. Michael, can you hear me? Michael, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. How are, are we? Hey, mate. How are you? To be honest with you, I'm having a really good day. I just, um, I just got another probably 1.1 kilo fish. Just as, um, just as Braden got off the phone um, to, to give us the heads up, we just uh, landed another 36 fork. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty pumped. Sitting in second place, mate. Uh, you have 10 fish for 7.248 kilos. Your bag today is bigger than your bag it, it was yesterday. It's yep. always nice to get a heavier limit each day, isn't it? Oh, look, to, to be honest, Steve, I, um, I mean, so, Simon, sorry. Um, to be honest, I felt much more confident going into the Hawkesbury than what I did the harbour. Um, I, I social fish this place more than I do the harbours. Familiar with this place, and um, I, I really enjoy the tide. Are you there? Yeah, mate, we've got you. It's just a bit glitchy with the weak signal. Oh, okay, yep. Um. So yesterday, relaxed. Yeah, yeah, definitely much more relaxed. Um, if you can, if you can go into day two, I um, I felt much more confident day two than I did day one or day three. I only love fishing the Hawkesbury. Um, and, um, one on the harbour. And then hopefully get a few more big upgrades. So, how are you expecting oh, the rest of the day mate, to play out? Is that, it going oh. to get better? Yeah, I, I, I think it will get better. I think, um, I think to be honest, the fish will be fewer at the moment. Okay, so, so what we might do is I might stop talking to you. I'll let you get back to the fishing, and we might just sit here and watch you for a while. Yep. 
Yep, too easy. Thank you. And also joining Michael, we have uh, a split screen. Michael and we have Peter Phelps on the right of the screen. Have you got me there? How you Pete? doing, Simon? Can you hear me? I've got you. Hey, buddy. There is a little bit of a delay, mate, but we'll try and keep some form of a conversation going. All right. Sounds good. How, how's your morning been? Run us through it. Uh, oh, there's one. He's not real big. Uh, it's been okay. Uh, I, I don't know what to expect on this place. Uh, um, I do have a. I think I've got three fish in the 30s and a couple around 25, 26 sort of thing. Um, it started out really slow for me. I uh, I pulled up out the front. Big fish in the wash. So I spent about an hour out there um, trying to get a big bite. And I did get a 34 out there. Uh, Tommy Slater was sharing similar sort of banks to me. He said he got busted off. Um, and so it sort of it gave me a little bit of incentive to stay there. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, all of course, rafts on the crankbait. I threw a crab around for a bit, uh, no bites. So I, I did come up river. I'm, I'm not very far up river. I'm not sure if you can see where we are here, but this is the main Hawkesbury and Cow and Creek's only sort of straight behind me here. I don't know all the names of the areas. Um, but yeah, we, we're sort of just running these main rocky points here. And the crankbait's been serving me pretty well, actually. Um, I haven't caught a ton of fish, but I've probably caught about seven or eight with a couple of nice ones in there. So it's been okay. I, I really want the tide to stay up so I can continue to throw this crankbait around. Um, as I've said it before, I'm not a great crab fisherman. Like, a, I can fish a jig for bass, but I just, I don't know. I, I don't have a great deal of confidence in the crab yet. I, I probably just need to catch a couple of big ones on it to get now, You've spent plenty of time throwing cranks for bass, and you're, you're quite well known for that. How are you fishing your cranks for him? Um, so you, you need the right conditions for brim. From, it's, it's very similar to bass. Um, you need like a bit of wind, uh, a bit of dirty water because uh, like when you think about a crankbait, they're, they're not really eating a fish. They're just sort of pure reaction uh, and, and just trying to get a reaction out of them. I need this, this current, this dirty water that's coming out of the main river here. And we've got a bit of swell and wind pushing in as well. So while this tide is up, I'm hanging around on this shallow cover here. And yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty basic technique. I'm looking for every little hole I can see, a uh, little crack, just trying to land my lure in between them and just... It's nothing too special to the retrieve. It's just slow wind out, and you're really relying on that crank to hit the rock and force that reaction out of them. It's good fun, but they're um, you know, it was pretty hairy this morning catching those. I got two thirty fours um in the bag now. I'm, I don't think I've logged one yet because I was out of reception. Um, but yeah, it was certainly good fun on the light line. 
trying to muscle them out of all the cracks and the oysters and everything else. Yeah, it was pretty hairy. Now that kind of country when it comes, to, when it comes to, to lures, have you have you lost many baits and have you lost many fish? Uh, no fish yet, which has been good, but I've lost quite a few few baits. I was telling Steve that rim fishing is definitely a rich man's sport. <laughs> um, when you can sort of quite easily lose four or five cranks in an hour and go through a hundred odd bucks, it's quite frustrating, especially if you hadn't caught a fish. That's what happened this morning. Um, you know, sometimes I land those crank on the swell and, you know, I'm not putting a 20-foot bass boat into the rocks just to get a $20 crankbait. So, unfortunately, you just got to make the sacrifice. What was that, mate? Breaking How's up a little bit been? there. Has it been raining? Uh, is it is it much wind out there at the moment? Uh, fair breeze here. We're um we're just inside the and it's blowing in off the ocean, and we've got all these little rain squalls going around. It's been quite annoying actually because I've had the rain gear on and off like four times because it, it rains just enough that you got to put it on. And then the sun comes out and you're stinking hot again. So it's, it's been a, a little frustrating, but I, um, I just thought that last good fish I got was like perfect conditions and I was sort of working my way up Cowan Creek. But um, the further I got up Cowan Creek, the less tide there was, the more glassed out conditions and the clearer the water was. And I'm like, no, I'm going to... I'm going to utilise this weather wipes around and just try and come back out the front here to, um, yeah, just to crank this dirty water while the tide's up. So, yeah, if the weather's okay, like I like it, I'd prefer it to stay like this. I don't want it to glass out and get hot because I'm not sure how I'm going to catch them when this crankbait dies. <laughs> now, uh, as I've mentioned, you've spent a lot of time chasing bass and you're starting to dabble a bit more in the broom. Is there much of a crossover in the gear that you're using between your broom and your bass? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, we, we sort of throw similar lures. They're probably just a slightly larger for, um, for bass. It's like Real size is always the same, but rods are fairly different. Um, I, I find I'll use a little bit lighter rod for the brim. Um, you know, this is an Impeak cranking rod. It's actually very light. I would never throw this for bass. Uh, and it's purely built just for cranking, uh, for him here. And it's all about, as we spoke before, about the deflection off the rocks and trying to draw that reaction bite. Um, so obviously the big difference is there's no bait casters on my deck this morning. It's all purely spin rods. Um, but yeah, you, you can obviously get away with pretty similar gear for both bass and, bass and brim. How much does it hurt not having a bait caster on board? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm get, as I said yesterday, Simon, like I, I feel like I'm getting better with my casting. Um, like I, I don't mind using a spin. Like Everyone asks me what's my favourite way to catch you know, bass or brim or whatever else. I don't really care. Like, I like catching them always. It's just as long as I'm catching them, you know, whether it's yeah. a grub or a top water or whatever else. Like, if, if and that's probably the best thing I love about brim over the bass is ninety percent of it. What I've done so far is all shallow water stuff. So you can sit here and cast it. You know, I'm, I'm looking at what I'm casting at. I'm not sitting out in a dam in eighty foot dropping grubs down to suspended fish sort of thing so this is why i love the brim fishing you know yeah, you, you can fish an edge all year round so yeah I, i'm shallow, loving the conversion over deep water, doesn't it? yeah for sure that as that's generally my answer when some, someone asks what's my favorite way to catch whatever it is and it's generally just as long as it's shallow water fishing i'm happy yeah i, I always try that if i can't touch the the bottom with my rod tip i'm fishing water too deep <laughs> yeah, well, that's one way of gauging it as well, yeah. 
Um, it's probably a good thing about um, rib fishing is like obviously sounders are quite uh, quite important these days, but it is handy not to sit there staring at a screen for a full session trying to catch fish you know, directly underneath you. It's nice just to give the shoulders and neck a rest and just look out at the horizon and what we're casting at. Yeah, we had a good chat yesterday about um, you know, your thoughts with your fishing and, and how you, you, you're doing some different stuff to, to bro- provide some new challenges in your life. Um, w- when it comes to changes in your life, you've also recently become a dad. How's that affected your time on the water? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's obviously been quite hard. I, I don't fish nowhere near as much as I used to. Uh, you know, having the little girl now is um, a lot more responsibility at home. So hence why the conversion over to Brim was a little bit easier. Uh, as I mentioned before, like I work pretty well 50% of the weekends of the year. So it's too hard to get time off work. And, you know, have enough time to be at home with the family um, and to fish, like, just commit myself to one series, whether it's really sort of, this year for me, all of that. So I'll, I'll fish both series when I can, where, you know, when family obviously comes first and then work, unfortunately. Lamborn next weekend. What's, what's the word? How's the place going to fish? Uh, oh. I haven't been there since the Open last year. I'm sure plenty of people out there may have heard what happened up there. We had a little accident with some fish, and I sort of just got a little bit over the the place. But I hear good reports. Um, The lake has been rising um, pretty steadily for the last six months, which is good. It's always good for a freshwater fishery like that. Um, and the fish are in good nick. They're, they're recovering from the drought. They're, they're starting to get fat again. There's plenty of... ...eight around. It's still going to be an autumn fish... You know, it doesn't really matter what you throw. You've got got a good chance of catching them anyway and, and honestly it's it's one of those tournaments where you know such and such caught them on a grub and you're like oh yeah fair enough or you know so and so sometimes out fishes it's really going to play to the conditions next week uh, and the guys that can fish those conditions they're the ones that are going to do well um and, you know, and that's what I've heard. It's been hot and cold. Hot water bite has been insane up there from what I hear. But you need the perfect morning where there's a bit of ripple on the water or that's overcast. And then you can throw top water for the rest of the day and not get a bite sort of thing. So um, it's going to be won by someone who's adaptable and, yeah, can fish those conditions. Uh, family bassing there with Carly actually a couple of years ago. And it was around the same time of year. And we were catching them on a jerk bait on top water and grubs and jigs deep. And it was funny because our, our winning bag on the last day, we literally had one fish in the well with like 40 minutes to go. And we we're fishing a jerk bait. And Carly just hates catching nothing. So she's like, let's go deep. And as we spoke about before, I'm not a fan of deep fishing. So I, I pleased her and we ended up going deep. And I think we caught a couple of small fish and then the wind blew. And I, I straight away, I'm like, they're going, to, they're going to eat on the edge. And we went over and jerk and edges and got two giants and I caught one on a jig. And we, we literally came from nowhere and weighed a monster bag and ended up winning the tournament. So <laughs> that's, that, that's the potential Glenbourne has, someone that can, like, fish those ideal conditions. So, yeah, making the right call at the right time. Now, I heard something really interesting yesterday about Glenbourne, that at the moment there's quite a few mice around and that, the bass may be keying in on the, uh, on the edges and, and getting stuck into it. Yeah, yeah, as everyone probably is aware, like there's a lot of stuff on the news and social media about the big mice plague that's um, kicking around in the Hunter Valley or all of New South Wales, I think. Yeah, and that's, that's probably going to um, play on the, the topwater bite. You know, they're a predatory fish, they're opportunity feeders. You know, I'm sure if a mouse swims off the edge, they're going to eat it. 
Um, you know, and I know guys that have been, you know, throwing like live target mice and things like that. And there's plenty of drowned, um, drowned grass and lots of vegetation up on the edges. So there's, there's potential there to sort of key into a, a, a mouse bite, which is pretty cool. Like I never thought I'd hear uh, or I'd hear someone talking about they keyed in on a mouse bite to win a tournament. No, so I'm no, looking no. forward to you know, seeing the coverage and the results. Yeah, like, like I've heard of mice plagues affecting hey there, other mate. species, but um, never bass. So um, who wouldn't love to catch a, uh, a, a you know a big heavy sack of bass on a on a <laughs> on a mouse uh, replication? Yeah, that would be very cool, for sure. All right, mate. So uh, we might just sit back here and uh, I'm not going to chat to you for a while. I'm just going to let you do your thing and we'll uh, we'll watch you catch a few fish, hopefully. Uh, well, i just done my little run of what I thought was going to produce a fish and we didn't really get much. Unfortunately, now I'm just looking around and that tide is getting pretty low. And all the rocks are pretty much just covered in kelp now. So I've lost that sort of deflection reaction bite with all these rocks. Which is unfortunate. Well, mate, I'm sure you I would love to uh, continue to catch just them. Just to keep running this crankbait for the rest of the day. I might have to change spots here. All right, mate. Well, uh, we might let you go. All the best for the rest of the session if we don't get a chance to talk to you again soon. All right, Peter Phelps uh, having another good day in the open. Today he's on the Hawkesbury, as are uh, all of our anglers, 24 anglers fishing this event. $12,000 we are giving away tomorrow afternoon, $5,000 for the champion, and they get to etch their name on that great perpetual trophy. Jamie McEwen is our leader at the moment. He's sitting there, 9 out of 10 for 7.307 kilos. Michael Colaturis, he's had a great day too. He has five fish in the well for 3.866 kilos, holding down second place. And then third, Chris Hickson. We haven't chatted to Chris yet. We're still trying to get him on the line and uh, find out how his day's played out. Today, Chris has five fish for 3.546. Uh, a good, solid improvement on day one. Yesterday, he had 3.213, so he's improved upon his day one performance. Wally Fay has moved into fourth place. And uh, a big part of his movement today is that 1.55 kilo fish, his first one this morning that he uh, muscled to the boat. He has five fish today for 4.022 kilos. Luke Rogan has slipped down a bit into fifth. Tom Slater in sixth, uh, another angler that we haven't chatted to yet today. Hopefully we can get him on the line soon. Mark Crompton in seventh. And Peter Phelps in 8th, Brett Crow in ninth, and Liam Carruthers in 10th place. Time, we have 11.31. We are four and a half hours through the session. Anglers will fish through until 2 p.m. And we have live coverage until 1 p.m. Tomorrow, they are back on Sydney Harbour, third and final day. It is payday tomorrow afternoon in the Daiwa Brim Australian Open. Well, uh, we're frantically trying to get some more of our anglers on the phone. Service is very patchy. Patchier than what we anticipated. All right, I'm going to bring up on the app here and have a look at what some of the most recent catches are. See who's been on to a bit of a flurry of late. Michael Colaturis was the last angler to log a fish into the app. Oh, we've had a refresh. Tom Slater has the two most recent fish logged in. Brett Crow, Daniel Bonacorso, another one from Tom. Travis Ryan Tucker, 
Co and Dennis Metzdorf and Wally have all featured in the most recent catches. All right, we have an update on the big brim. We have big brim prizes for the four longest and heaviest fish. Wally Fay has the biggest brim so far, 41 centimetres, followed by Brett, Prenpa, uh, Brett Penpray, let's put my teeth back in, his first fish yesterday, 38 centimetres. Jamie Johnson in third with 37 and a half, and Jamie McEwen in fourth with 37. Um, we actually have two fish, two 37 centimetre fish, Jamie McEwen and Tom Slater. So a close scoreboard there for the big fish. I'm looking at the scoreboard on the screen there. McEwen with nine fish, Colaturus with 10, Hickson 10, Fay 10. Rogan has 10 and Tommy is there with nine fish. So most of our top 10 have a limit. If they don't, they are one shy of their full bag for the tournament. All right, Jamie McEwen, can you hear me? Yeah, mate, I've got you there. How are you, mate? How's your morning? Can you hear me? I've got you. Uh, mate, it's been, slow. it's been slow this morning. I've just got uh, my fifth fish. It's not, lo it's not logged on the system, but I've got five. The last one I got was a 33 forker, so I've got two small ones I need to um, get rid of fairly quickly. So heading off this morning, what sort of weight did you want to bring to the bring to the scales today? What, what was what did you have your heart set on? Mate, I, I said to you this morning I would be absolutely stoked with three kilo. You confident you're going to get that, uh, mate? I think. Oh, just looking at the app, I think I've got four fish at the moment for uh, 2.5 or something. So I've got my fifth fish, um, and it's 33 forks. So it should have me up in that three kilo range. It's just not logged because I haven't got reception on my phone. All right, mate. Um, you want to give us a bit of a tip on where you might be? Yeah, mate, I'm up Spencer at the moment. Um, just dragging crabs in deep water, going through plenty of gear. Um, I've lost two good fish and, and dropped four with spat hook. So I had to really wait for the tide to start running out. And it just had, it, it's happened probably in the last hour. When I, first, when I caught my first fish was probably when it started to trickle out. So it was a little bit behind. So, um, yeah, I just, it, man, I really just had to sort of bite down and stay up here and just wait, be patient. For the folks who don't know, how far of a run is Spencer from the takeoff at Bayview? Uh, I'm not really sure, mate. I was just, I, I stopped at a couple of spots on the way up because I knew the tide would still be running up, up here. So, um, but I think it's about 40 odd minutes um, to, to get back to the, the start. So, yeah, once, once I'm up here, I'm committed. There's nothing else I can do. So... I just had to, yeah, just wait it out, and it's it's sort of finally started to turn on a bit. One of your greatest attributes as an angler is that you are patient, and you need to be when fishing crabs down deep. So, um, fourth cast, I lose a crab. <laughs> um, so yeah, you got to spot lock, tie a new one on, and then go with that. So I've got two small ones that I caught a bit earlier that I that I've just got to get rid of and yeah I'll, I'll be pretty um pretty happy like i'm i'm happy already um but yeah i'll be really happy if i can get rid of those smaller ones so how many crabs did you have in your tackle box when you you arrived here for the tournament uh mate i had about a hundred when i arrived at lake macquarie and uh cringe cringe back there i've probably got about 30 left <laughs> It's all right, mate. We've only got a day and a half to go, so uh, you, you may have you may have got it just right. 
Yeah, mate. Yeah, that's what I, I've got a box uh, stashed away that has that 30 in it. So I put, um, you know, like a, a quota in for today and thought I need to I need to be so I can be comfortable tomorrow and not panic about losing crabs. I need to have that 30 in the box. You need to get that winner's check to break even with uh, your, your crab expenses. Yeah, pretty much, mate. Lake, Lake Macquarie win is just going to replace the crabs from the whole week, pretty much. <laughs> it, it's good to see you reinvesting the money into the sport. Yeah, mate. Yeah, got to have them or you're not going to be up there, I don't reckon, myself. So that's that's what I do. Well, well, mate, you seem uh, quite upbeat uh, and quite content with the way the day's rolling out. Uh, we'll let you get back to it. Thank you very much for your Thanks, time. Thanks, mate. See you, mate. We'll see you at the way in. Uh, Jamie McEwen seems very content with his day two in the open. Uh, as he said, he would be happy with three kilos today. Still one fish that hasn't come through under the app. So we'll, uh, we'll sit patiently and get an update on the scoreboard and see where his day two limit is going to rest at. So nine fish on the screen there for him. We know he has ten. We're just waiting for that fifth one to go through. Michael Colaturis in second place. Do a refresh on the screen. We'll bring the rest of the places. Wait for the technology to load. Can take a little while. And it was nice to see some sunshine there with Jamie. Uh, it was rainified this morning, but it uh, looks like it may have eased back a little bit. Tomorrow, I believe it's going to be a lot wetter out there. I think we have about an 80% chance of rain tomorrow when we are back on the harbour for day three of the Open. We are still trying to tee up a few more anglers to cross to. Phone signal is always an issue when you come to the Hawkesbury. Here we have Jamie on the screen, Michael in second, Luke Rogan in third, Chris Hickson in fourth, Wally Fay in fifth, sixth, Slater, seventh, Crompton, ninth, Phelps. Sorry, eighth is Phelps, ninth is Jamie Johnson, and ten is Brett Crow. Just about everybody there with a the limit. We have one, two, two. Anglers, Peter Phelps and Jamie Johnson, still one fish shy of their limits. The standout fish for the tournament so far belongs to Wally Fay, his 41 centimetre fish from this morning. And we are live with Ahmed. How are you, Ahmed? How you going, mate? I'm really well. How are you? Ah. Good, good. How's your What's morning? What's going on? Yeah, it started off better than I expected. And then couldn't capitalize on the bites. I've lost, I think, three or four. Really good fish. I've got one. Really good one. Um, yeah. So the big one you got this morning, how long was it? I think it was 38 fork. 378 fork. So 38 fork. It was an awesome fish. Uh, your passion came through over the, uh, over the video. Sorry, what was that? It was a great fish. You were over the moon with that capture. Uh, we could tell on the video. Yeah, it was a, it was a very, um, it was very difficult to put, bring it out of. So um, I was very happy that I, I pulled one of them out. But I had another three, I think three or four, same opportunities, but just didn't didn't land them. And what'd you catch it on? I uh, got that one off a of grub. Yeah, on a on a one sixteenth jig head. Um, just uh, flicking it over the rocks. So 
So, yeah. So, how many fish have you caught so far today? I think we are on four. Um, two squeakers, one, I think, 29 and a half fork, and uh, yeah, and um, yeah, a couple of squeakers. All right, because at the moment we have no fish logged in. So I'm still, I'm you. still so, trying to go so, big. Yeah, so so we're interested to see what you're going to get once they start to come through. You're currently sitting in 16th place, but um, we know once those fish get logged in, you're going to move up a fair way. Okay, so once, um, so who's got the biggest bag so far? That's the interesting question. <laughs> uh, Michael Colaturis is sitting at Can't 3 tell eight at the moment. <laughs> Nice, nice. Fair enough. All right. So uh, I might not Sorry, talk to you for a while. We're just going to sit back and yep. watch you do your thing, okay? Come on. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Come on, good girl, good girl, come on, come on. Oh. Oh. Yes, yes. That's okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Got excited for a second. <laughs> That's exactly what we love, mate. Well done. Yeah, but it's the wrong species, so, yeah. I honestly thought that was, um, that was my second kicker, but it um, didn't happen. Close, but uh, no cigar, as they say. No. Yep, that's right. Fair enough. It is what it is. All right, we'll, we'll just sit Keep back and watch you, mate. No worries.
All right, we might uh, leave Ahmed there. As you can see, the signal is rather, rather sketchy, as it has been for many of the anglers today out on the Hawkesbury. Um, let's do a bit of a recap of the scoreboard. Jamie McEwen, we chatted to Jamie earlier and he said he had his fifth fish in the well, but the scorecard at the moment is only showing for four, so he has nine for 7.3. In second place, Michael Colaturis. He is, um, he's probably been the standout angler so far today. Five fish for 3.86, all up he's got 10 for 7.248. Luke Rogan, two consistent bags so far today. Yesterday he had 3.44. Today he's got 3.66, he's, he's holding down third place. Chris Hickson, uh, one of the anglers who came out of the traps very fast this morning. He had 3.21 yesterday, today he has 3.54. Wally Faye sitting in fifth place with 10 for 6.5. Tom Slater in sixth with 10 for 6.40. Mark Crompton in 7th with 10.57. Peter Phelps 9 with 5.22. Pete's still looking for his fifth fish today. Liam Carruthers, full bag for the two days. He is in ninth place, 10 for 509. And Jamie Johnson rounds out the top 10. He's one shy of his limit today. All up, he has nine fish for 4.88. That's our scoreboard at the moment. As I mentioned, we are missing one fish for Jamie on the scoreboard. Just waiting for sufficient signal that he can log that into the app for us. Um, we are working on getting Michael Colaturis on live soon, hopefully. And uh, Daniel Bonacorso, we're keen to chat to as well. We've spoken to everybody in the top three so far. That's the top three at the end of day one. Uh, Jamie Armoured, we are just after Dan to chat to him to see how his day is going as well. All right. Come on, come on boy. Good girl. I don't have to boy or a girl. No. That's one of them. Oh, look at that donkey. Oh, look at the girl from that thing. Wow, look at that. Another four more. Look at that, that's a one and a half kilo. At least. Tried to bury you a few times. Yeah, boy, yeah, mate. Fuck. Mm. Yeah. And we are back live and on screen we have Daniel Bonacorso. Dan, can you hear me? Hey, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me well? I, I've got you loud and clear, mate. How's your morning been? Uh, it's been an absolute shocker. Um, everywhere I've gone, the first half of the morning just couldn't catch a fish. The last hour I've probably lost about three or four fish. Nice ones. Um, mostly at the boat, two at the net, one dusted me. It's been a shocker. So, so how many you got in the app so far? Only two. You're starting to get a little bit frantic? It's, um, yeah. I don't think I'll hold anywhere near the top, the top 10, but I'll, I won't give up yet. So we just passed the halfway mark through the session. Um, what's your plan for the back end of the session? Are you going to do the same thing or are you going to change? Uh, now I'm just jump fishing. I'm just motoring through any, um, any man-made structure that I can. Fishing it really fast. I'm just targeting those active feeding fish. 
So are you fishing fresh water of, or have other anglers perhaps been fishing these spots? Uh, well, the fact that there's a few, um, we're seeing a few fish and we're catching a few, uh, well, losing them, I should say. Um, I'd say that no one's sort of come through. I don't know if you can see that, but that's um, a fish did. That's my hook. It's crushed my hook. So fish hit. Just a numbers game, I guess. Hopefully, I can put a bag together before the end of the session. So, what lures have you been using this morning? Um, so, right now, I'm using a... Uh, went out and bought about 250 packets. Um, they're very similar to a crabby, but they tend to skip and slide a bit better. They're a lot softer, too. And what size jig head? Uh, at the moment, I'm fishing a 124. Yeah, just fishing light. Um, I've seen a couple of fish feeding, so I don't want to spook them when I'm casting to the boat. And how many casts would you put in on a boat? Just one. It's not what I normally do, but um, you know, I am pretty desperate, so I'm just just targeting those active feeding fish. Um, and, normally, and you cast the... in. What's the sweet Sorry, spot? Is it the keel or is it the anchor rope? What might it be? Um, it doesn't. At this point, it doesn't really matter. I just want to get my lure in as close as possible to the boat. I find that in this clear water, as soon as the lure goes anywhere near that boat, any brim that's on this side of the hull will see it. Yeah. Um, and they'll either take it or they'll spook. So, yeah, I'm just trying to fish really fast. And um, like I said, I found a few fish, but I just I've had everything go wrong. Um, uh, the last one got stuck on a, my line got stuck on a barnacle that was on the hull. So just, yeah. All right, okay, mate, so fun. I might stop talking to you for a minute. We might just uh, sit back here and watch you for a little bit, hey? Yep, that's fine. Later. Morning, Tom. How's your day? Pretty good right now. I just caught a uh, 35. Baitcaster and brim fishing. I love it. Yeah. Uh, is that the first live baitcast brim catch? Yes. 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 I'll take that title. <laughs> oh, just watch the finger. There we go. There he yeah. is. I'll give you a look. Uh, zoom out on the camera. I don't know That's how to do it. That. How's that for Hawkesbury Brim? 355. Um, I can't enter it because I'm live. 
All right, we're going to let Tommy take care of a little bit of a uh, little bit of paperwork dealing with his fish and logging into the upper solid fish there. 355, I think he said it was. So Tom is sitting in fifth place at the moment. Um, so we will patiently wait to see where he's going to move to, whether he will move based on that fish. Um, good, good looking fish from, uh, from the Hawkesbury. Something to be passionate about. It's a baby. Come on. It's just lit too. Brayden, did you have some um, chips there? Stuff. He's on the electric leading it out. Oh, he's, a, he's a nice fish. He's probably about 1.1, 1.2. with Tommy Slater. How are you, Tom? Not too bad. Sorry about that. I had some upgrading right, to do. Um, run us through that fish. Uh, where'd you catch it? What'd you catch it on? And how big was it? Um, so I'm up. Uh, I don't know the, the name of the location. Just south of Spencer or just down. Amy, um, back in the harbour tomorrow was to catch a, a big bag today. So I standed one of them, which was the 37. Um, I got a little fish there and I probably spent maybe a little bit too much time there, but I just know what, what caliber of fish live there. Um, so I came up here about 40 minutes ago and I think I've caught maybe six or seven fish just off this little um, rocky uh, bank up here. Um, cranker crabs and just dragging them. I have been crankbaiting this morning. The big one came on uh, the same prototype crankbait actually that I caught the 5.71 at Gippy on um, which was really cool so I got a the 37 on that and then crankbaited some stuff up here and so I'm just dragging a anchor crab and then once I had my five I pulled out the uh, pulled out the bait caster with the bigger crab on it uh, and then first I think it was second cast maybe got a um, 355 so almost 36 forker um, and uh, so we'll go back up and Try again. The current is absolutely roaring. So every time I catch a fish, I drift 150 meters off the spot, and it takes me 10 minutes to get back there. So, so run us through your reasoning as to why you're using a bait caster. 
Um, it's just got, I've got a little bit more control with it because you, cause you can click it into free spool so I can lock the drag to try and get them up out of the rocks. And then without having, without having to, to bugger around with the um, drag on a spinning reel, I can just click it into free spool if the fish takes a run after I've got him out of the rocks. Um, a side point is it's just really cool and I love throwing bait cast tackle. I can um, understand that. But the yeah the added control of the of your thumb on the spool, um, I think is actually really key. These trying to get these big fish out of these rocks. It's just a better tool to do the job with, isn't it? Yeah, correct. So it's very similar. I mean, this whole technique of fishing is very similar to um, jig fishing at Glenbourne Dam or one of the bass dams. Um, you know, crank a crab. Um, fish is very similar to a skirter jig for bass you, you drag it on the bottom you wait for the bite and you and you set the hook on them so uh, I just I just think a bait caster makes sense especially when we're throwing the bigger size um, cranky crab or if you've got a little one with added weight on it so um, I'll be using this again tomorrow in the harbour to try and pull those big fish off the bridge so and, and what what rod are you running the bait caster on uh, sorry Simon what'd you say what rod are you using for the baitcaster? Uh, this is actually a prototype that I'm currently uh, making for Dyla. So um, it's, it will be in the in-feet range if it comes out. Um, just playing around with a few different actions, uh, handle lengths and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I've got actually I've got a couple of prototype baitcasters. Rod locker, I just happened to pull this one out first and it's certainly doing the trick. So. We're almost back at the point now, so hopefully so we'll catch what, a fish for you on camera. What's the take like with those fish down deep? Uh, it's pretty, it's just a, a, you know, a telltale kind of thud um, or, you know, if they bite it and they get it and they're trying to shake the hook, you'll get like a rattle kind of bite. Um, but like that one, I felt it hit the bottom. I took up the slack. I just felt a solid clunk and uh, struck and he was on there. So um, we'll see if we can catch another one. The, uh, the cranker crabs have been a real game changer when it comes to brim fishing in this country. And, and you know, they've inflated the weights of the bags. You know, it's like pre-cranker crab and post-cranker crab when it comes to average <laughs> bag weights, isn't it? So fun, funny that last night we were talking and we, I've, I've coined the term uh, BC, which is before crab, and AC, which is after crab. Yeah. Um, so we were talking, I was actually talking to Cam Widham and we were talking about bag weights and we were referencing, you know, one or two BC as in one or two years before cranker crabs came out. Yeah. But yeah. you're right, they have, uh, they have just totally, I mean, especially in Sydney up to the Gold Coast, any of those rivers, um, you know, you look at the weights that it takes to win, say the Clarence River now or Ballina, it's like a kilo heavier than before crabs came out. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's and quite I think, staggering how it's changed things. Yeah, and I think it's um, partly due, just obviously the, the crabs seem to attract a bigger calibre of fish, um, but it also, crab fishing lends itself to fishing deep, you know, out the front of the rivers, on the north and south wall, on the reef like Jamie's fishing in the harbour, which yeah. tends to be, in my opinion, a lot of the time where big fish tend to hang out. So yeah. Yeah. Um, if you've, if you've got a crab in your hand and you're fishing those areas, you're probably going to catch a couple yeah. of reasonable fish. Those type of spots consistently produce bigger fish than anywhere else does. And, and I suppose pre-crank a crab, we didn't really have a bait that we could fish those spots as efficiently and effectively with. Yeah, correct. We can catch fish. Um, on plastics, and I've caught fish here in this spot on plastics, and um, little bait junky grubs and that sort of thing. But and the time you spend changing plastics and stuff as you're catching fish, you're more efficient to throw. You know, you don't really have to to muck it, and because the cores float, you can just drag it over the rocks. Oh no, my drag, my drag's loose. Oh, that's another good one.
Should have uh, reset my drag after that first one. There we go. He's probably an upgrade. Is an app I hope you bring there. Not a huge one. Yep. Okay, hold on. Let me. Let me borrow that for you. Sorry, mate. Tap screen once. They should have got that on camera. That. Is that better? Okay. Yeah, that's much better. Bit of troubleshooting on the go, and we are done. <laughs> 29. Can I put this? What am I going to do? Let me think. We'll get back to you Thank a little you. bit later, I think, mate. Thank you. Cheers, Simon. See you, bud. Mr. Consistency, as always, Tommy Slater. We have another angle on the line. He's He's going to join us very soon. And I don't know who it is, so it might be a bit of a surprise, Drew. He has 3.305 today. 10 fish for 8.081. His next closest challenger is Michael Colaturis. He has 10 fish for 7.248. So about, uh, what are we looking at? About uh, 800 grams there between them. Luke Rogan's moved up to third, Chris Hickson in fourth, Tom in fifth, Wally in sixth, Crompton in seven, Jamie Johnson in eighth, Peter Phelps in nine, and Liam Carruthers has moved into tenth place. That's quarter past 12, so we've got about 45 minutes to go till the end of live today on day two of the Dial of Brim Australian Open. Tomorrow is the third and final day. It is payday tomorrow afternoon on the banks of the Sydney Harbour. $12,000 to be handed over to five lucky anglers. And the winner will head home with $5,000 in their back pocket. We also have dollar prices for the four biggest fish for the tournament. I'll scroll down and have a look at what those heaviest fish are so far. Uh, 41 centimetres is the longest so far, belonging to Wally Fay. Caught that one this morning. The second biggest is 38 centimetres by Brett Penpraise. Third is Jamie Johnson with his 37 and a half yesterday. And we have two fish equal on fourth, 37 centimetres, both by Jamie McEwen and Tom Slater. I suppose the real news story so far is um, Daniel Bonacorso. He was sitting in third place after day one. And when we saw him earlier, he was struggling on day two. Let's see what I can find. He's sitting in 13th place at the moment and he has two fish in his limit. Keen for another three. Anglers fish until 2 p.m. this afternoon. It'll take us a little while to turn around, turn around and finalise those scores. Make any small adjustments that need to be made. Looking at the top 10 there, everybody except ninth place Peter Phelps has their full limit for the day. Pete's punching well above his weight. We know him as a bass angler, but we're not terribly familiar with him as a brimmer. But he's obviously got some skills in the bag because he's sitting in ninth place in a very talent-stacked field.
We will be off to Dremoyne Sailing Club again tomorrow morning, checking our boats from about 6 o'clock to 6.30. We'll do some interviews with our leaders and we will send them off. About 7 o'clock they will get away. And there'll be some nervous boys tomorrow. Caught it and sent it through. You tried to bury you a few times. <laughs> yeah, boy, yeah, mate. Fuck. Mm. Yeah. They're the ones we want. They're the ones we want early. Yes! Woo! Nice That's fish. a good start. Ah, oh, okay, yes, now I'm with you. Yeah, if we've got nobody else, it's probably good. About a fish, Blake. That? About a fish? Yeah, good one. Even if we, um, one that's we gonna don't help talk me. to him much and we just watch him. That's right, he gave it back, didn't he? Oh. That's how you go fishing without the, with the worst net job ever, but we got it in. I got it on camera too, sorry. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm not ashamed to make it for myself. As long as I get these things in the boat, I don't care. Woo! Beautiful. Leading it out. Oh, he's, a, he's a nice fish. Come on. Come on. 
baby. Come on. Oh yeah, he's a keg. Come on, Nate. He's a keg, Come on, baby. Come on. There it is. That's how it's done. <laughs> awesome stuff, mate. Well done. He's 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 probably about 1.1, 1.2. All right, we are back live, and we are with Jamie McEwen. Jamie, how are you, mate? Hi, mate. Yeah. Three zero five. Excellent. All right, mate. Well, I'm not going to talk to you much. We're just going to sit back and watch your uh, watch what you're doing, hey? Yeah, no worries. Oh, he's on to a big fish. Oh, I lost him. Oh, I lost him. Nice wearing. He <laughs> lost the big fish. <laughs> Had to put too much pressure on him, getting him out of the, uh, the snag there. So I'm just going to push back up to the, the top of the drift again and uh, have another go. It's a shame.
He's on again, he's on again. Wrong species. Wrong species, unfortunate. On. He's back on. Oh! So he's 27 and a half, I think he may upgrade by half a centimetre. <laughs> so he wanted bigger than 27 and he's got a 27 and a half in his hand. Have a look for you. That one's gone through, so yeah, we can just roll it off. Oh, roll it right, small yeah, upgrade five. there for Jamie.
moment he has 10 fish for 8.4 up uh, has moved up into third place he has 7.129 moves out the top 10 So there we are, our leader, our defending champion, Jamie McEwen. Solid bag on day two. He was a little bit concerned about what Hawkesbury would produce for him. I suppose if any leg was going to be the weak leg, he thought it would be the Hawkesbury, but it has failed to do that for him, and he's found the fish. He was going to be happy with three kilos, but at the moment he has about 3.3 .3 in the app, so um, he'll, be, he'll sleep well with that limit under his belt today. Of course, tomorrow... They're back on Sydney Harbour, and we know how kind Sydney Harbour has to has been to him over the past yesterday and, of course, two years ago when he won that title. So there he is out the front, Jamie McEwen, looking at the weather map at the moment, and it looks like some of that rain has cleared through. They are forecasting plenty of rain for tomorrow, 90 or 80% chance of rain tomorrow, and quite substantial falls, I believe. We are also looking at some of the catches from earlier. Prices for the four biggest fish. Let's scroll down and bring up those biggest fish for us. Now, the standout one so far belongs to Wally Fay, 41 centimetres. He, uh, he caught his fish this morning. Just waiting for the app to load. Brett Penpraise was in second place in the big fish chase. 38 centimetre fish from yesterday. We have a 375 by Jamie Johnson, and then we have two anglers on 370, Jamie McEwen and Tom Slater. So they're our four biggest fish for the tournament so far. Weight-wise, what do those measurements uh, convert to? Well, Wally's phase fish is uh, 1.54. Then we have a 1.21, a 1.16, and two fish at 1.15. So every fish in the top four has been over a kilo. We are back live with Tom Slater. How are you, Tom? Uh, not bad. I've been busted off four times since I last spoke to you. Four I'm times. Going to all my rods now. I've tied 14 <laughs> pound on. Like way too long of a leader because it's tangling with a terrible knot. Because I've got probably 15 minutes before I have to probably leave from here. So I'm just uh, a little bit frazzled, you could say. Now, you're sitting in third place at the moment. Your limit for the day is three points. And hopefully I get one more bite and I can actually land at this time. Uh, there's, I think, a 29 and a half that I, I'd really like to get rid of with another mid-30s or something would be nice. So you're about 1.3 kilos behind Jamie. Yeah. I need to probably be about 1.3 kilos in front of January. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's me. How deep is it where you're fishing? Uh, I'm boat probably in 12. I'm casting into anywhere from 15 to um, 17. I've really tied the worst lead in here. This is why you shouldn't rush and buy a terrible knot instead of the knot you normally tie. Let me get windy too, which is going to be fun too. With an hour to go, it probably won't take an hour. 
but I just want to have a little bit of time up my sleeve. So. It's probably probably half an hour to the front of pit water, maybe. I should have a little bit of spare time once I'm back. I can fish a couple of boats or something. Just don't want to leave it too too long up here because with the run out tide and this wind against tide, the front is going to be absolutely insane. This is where I'm bats around. There's quite a big eddy, and that's where I've actually been able to land the fish because I don't think there's as much um, big boulders and stuff around. So, yes, I was. Eight cast uh, worked. I busted off. Now the leader is about a foot long. So. The boat's 22 feet now, so it just is a, it's a gradual drop off, off that point with all the boulders in it. Are the fish sitting in one spot in particular, or are they sort of, you know, scattered throughout the region? Uh, no, they seem to be fairly well spread out. I've caught fish is probably in a, I don't know, probably a 100 metre stretch, kind of all over it. But I think they're just sitting behind, behind the boulders. Yeah. Um, with this current roaring like it is. Um, they're just sitting behind them waiting for something to drift past. Now, I haven't mentioned to the folks uh, about your less than ideal start to the day. You got down this morning and launched your boat and then realised that you'd left your phone at home and you had to dash back and you missed the start by a couple of minutes. I did, yeah. Um, silly me in a rush. I got the phone and uh, realised Phelps' lights were on in his car. So I was running around doing that, paying for parking. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a... Uh, Bit of a crazy start to the, uh, the tournament. Not something I'd like to repeat. But it didn't uh, didn't really affect us. Just no one uh, no one stopped on Flint and Steel, apart from me and Phelpsy anyway. So we were uh, last and second last from the start line. <laughs> so it didn't uh, didn't really change anything for the for the plan or anything like that. Just. Not ideal to be rushed like that in the morning. Having a phone for an app tournament is probably as important as having your rubs and reels. Absolutely. When we first got here, it was just crazy. Every car still getting a hook up, a bite, a bust off. And I think now, because I've gone kind of up and back over it a few times, they've probably shut, a, shut down a little bit. So is this a historical spot for you? You've fished other tournaments here? 
Uh, never fished a tournament here. I've actually only ever fished once, and that was uh, really bass fishing, trying to find some estuary perch. And just remembered that it had this kind of sweeping bend on the run out tide. It would edit eddy up really nice. And I figured um, I was going to come up this way anyway, and I was driving past, and I thought I'd pull in and stop. And uh, yeah, it proved to be the right decision. A little bit more tin on the 14 pounds for some reason. We get about seven, eight minutes to fish before I want to start trying to make my way back. I'll go up to the gnarly point again. Isn't it? I knew it would as soon as I tied it. You know what Uncle Grayson would say about it, don't you? Yeah. Do it properly the first time. Right now, whenever, it, when everyone's watching, going, "Is this thing supposed to be a good?" Fish? That was a terrible idea for a car. Hopefully 
with shredded 14 pounders, like equivalent to eight pounders. Leave you there, Tom. Thanks for your time, mate. All the best for the last of the session. All right, thanks, Tom. Happy trails. So there we are, Tommy Slater. Tom's had a good day too. He's sitting there in third place today with 3.971. All up 10 fish for 7.129 kilos. Ahead of him, we have Michael Colotouris with 7.328. Jamie McEwen out in front once again. Busted eight kilos. He's nearly at eight and a half. He has 8.462 kilos. So he has over a kilo lead over second place, Michael Colaturis. Another great day in the Daiwa Broom Australian Open. We have one more to go. And of course, that is tomorrow, the third and final day. And they are back to Sydney Harbour. It's going to be a great day. Weather looks like it's going to be a real contender tomorrow. Um, we are expecting a fair bit of rain tomorrow, but... Um, as always, it's just a prediction. It's not a, um, it's not a fait accompli that it will play out as they predict. I think we are just about done, folks. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. It's been good fun. We'll be back again tomorrow from 10 a.m. through to 1 p.m. The anglers will start fishing at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Take off from Dremoyne Sailing Club. Once again, we'll be down there doing our interviews. We'll put together an edit and we'll be back live with you 10 o'clock tomorrow. Thanks a lot.